Subcutaneous methotrexate requires a prior authorization. It's indicated for severe rheumatoid arthritis and really should only be used after the patient's had a meaningful trial of, of for example, generic methotrexate. Many plans may cover that through their specialty pharmacy uh, arm, uh, either uh, through their PBM or if they have that service bundled within the, the services of the plan. Usually, because of the complexity of that type of drug, that's not something that's going to be available at retail, but certainly accessing it through retail uh, could be an option depending upon the plan design. Frequently, we see requests for retail for drugs like this come to us mainly when you're talking about people who are in geographically isolated areas or if there's some issue where the, the specialty pharmacy can't deliver the product, say through you know, uh, overnight shipping or something of that nature. Most health plans will use a limited network of specialty pharmacies to manage not only rheumatoid arthritis, but really all chronic conditions involving specialty drugs. The advantage of having a limited network is primarily control. It means that we can validate the, the quality of service, that we have uh, visibility in terms of who the members are who are on these drugs, as well as the physicians prescribing them. And it also allows the health plan to collect that data ideally in real time so we can track the, the progress of the patient and identify any issues as they evolve. It also is a great data source to allow us to have nurse case managers, disease case managers, pharmacists who are involved with managing specialty uh, products to reach out to the member and make sure that the member has all of the tools and education that he or she may need. Access to biologic drugs and really all of the drugs available for rheumatoid arthritis is obviously critically important. My experience has been that rheumatologists, because they are so heavily focused on this uh, particular area, are ver very knowledgeable about how to make the, pr the system work efficiently, what they need to do in order to obtain prior authorization approval from the health plans of the, the patients that they serve. Many plans, such as ours, have pharmacists who are dedicated to the specialty pharmacy area, and their job is to provide education, to touch base with the member uh, in between uh, dosage refills and make sure that there aren't any issues around claims or any delivery issues. Also to validate that the member understands the proper way to administer the drug and has not had any problems. It's meant really to complement the, the education and support that the physician is giving in the office and make sure that the member has that practical piece so that he or she will be able to use the drug in the best and most efficient way. Adherence and compliance is critical for any condition, and certainly it's very, very important in rheumatoid arthritis. Even though we're talking about conditions that can have major impact on lifestyle and an individual's ability to be mobile and functional, we still see challenges with, with adherence, even in a situation like this. One of the things that our plan does, and this is a common scenario across managed care, is that we have pharmacists who are dedicated to the specialty pharmacy area whose job it is to contact members on a monthly basis prior to us distributing the next dose of the medication to make sure that the member is doing well, to identify any problems with the last month's treatment, to find out when the, the patient has the next visit with the physician and to answer any questions that the patient might have prior to that next physician visit. One of the things that uh, our pharmacists do, which I think is very important in terms of member support and maximizing adherence, is actually of some very nitty-gritty processes like making sure that any claims issues or cost-sharing issues are addressed and, and taken care of, and also to make sure that when we are going to be shipping out a dose of a very expensive drug that the member is there to receive it so that we don't have any challenges with drugs being lost or spoilage along the way. I think that extra service and, and customer support is really critical in making sure that we're getting maximum levels of compliance from members. Rheumatoid arthritis is a complex condition and there are many issues that need to be addressed for uh, a patient slash member who is, on, who is being treated for rheumatoid arthritis. Many plans such as ours will leverage many different individuals and competencies to help support that, members, that member. We have, for example, case managers and nurse uh, disease managers who will uh, contact the member once a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is made to answer questions, to make sure that individual is plugged into the right system of care, 
that issues around logistics and claims and accessing uh, testing and, and uh, receiving the drugs that he or she may need, all of those are answered. We also uh, use our pharmacists who are dedicated to the special pharmacy, specialty pharmacy area to also work with the member to address issues that might uh, pop up around dosing, around administration, around concerns over potential side effects or tolerability issues. And working together between our nurse managers and our pharmacists, our goal is to complement what's happening in the doctor's office by answering a lot of those nitty-gritty day-to-day questions and issues in order to maximize the, the opportunity for the member to get the most benefit out of the drug and also to maximize the compliance with the, the treatment that the physician has prescribed. Certainly, working with the rheumatologists as we go through this process is critically important. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a lifelong condition. It's very important, we believe, that our members develop relationships with their rheumatologists, that they are getting the answers and information they need from their rheumatologists. Our nurses and pharmacists work with members to answer a lot of their nitty-gritty questions around logistics and claims and questions about actual administration of the drug. We also are very anxious to be able to share that information with the rheumatologist, assuming that we get the permission of the member to do so, and typically we do. We think that that's a way to complement the information that the rheumatologist has in the office from his or her observation and work with the member to make sure that the physician has really a, a 360 degree view of what's going on with the member. That I think is a way not only to maximize things like compliance and adherence, but also ultimately to maximize the, the clinical outcome for the member.